Hi darlings, you are welcome to today's episode of Latest Nigeria Mommy in Town Season 2. And we're going to be talking about breastfeeding 101 today. How many of you are excited for this topic? Okay, I'll see you shortly. Welcome back to our channel. How have you been? How has the week been thus far? Amazing, I hope. So today we're going to be talking about breastfeeding 101. Ah, there's a lot to talk about. But we're just going to talk about the basics and then my own personal breastfeeding story. Are you ready? Okay. So I'm just going to say the same facts here. I'm not dissing anybody. But... According to so many scientific researches and papers, breastfeeding is arguably one of the best things that you can do for your baby in the first few months of your baby's life. One of the best things you can offer, one of the best things that you can give your baby. The reason is because the breast milk contains not just lactose, proteins, um, fat, yummy goodness that is good for your baby's body, but it contains living cells that cannot be reproduced by any lab. Living, actual living cells that um, help with your baby's immunity, that help with your baby's gut health, that help with coating your baby's intestine and all those kinds of things, and general health of your baby's body during the course of, you know, your baby's breastfeeding life okay when a, when a child is born a child is born with little or no personal you know immunity they don't come with their own immune system they don't they develop it over time so the child is very dependent on the mother and other things to help to ramp up you know and to protect it against diseases and germs so Formulas are actually beautiful and they are good things. And, you know, over the years, they've improved to try to give your baby, you know, enough of the nutrients that your baby need to be able to cope, you know, in those few months of your baby's life before your baby begins to develop his or her own immunity. But there's nothing like a mother's breast milk. There's nothing like breast milk. And that's just facts. Those living organisms actually combat bacterial growth like some people use breast milk for everything because they can is evident like you can have a rash and you put breast milk on a rash and then it disappears i remember one time these popular twin sisters tia and tamara they said that tamara was very ill and she had been ill for a while she had been using different drugs and things but her sister had just given birth and she asked her sister for her own breast milk and she drank it and like the next day she was fine <laughs> no, it's a weird story, but I'm just trying to show you that breast milk is super powerful. And the way breast milk is and the breast is with a child, if a child is ill and needs certain antibodies, once the child puts lip to nipple, the nipple will communicate with the brain that the child needs this thing. So your body begins to produce those antibodies that go into your breast milk and then goes to the child. So you notice that a lot of breastfeed ba uh, breastfed babies do not have respiratory problems. They rarely have respiratory problems. They barely, they rarely have immune system problems. They are a lot healthier, in quotes, than, you know, formula-fed babies. And it's also said that um, breastfed babies, there's some rich researches that show that it's um, the brain function, you know, breast milk increases brain function. Um, brain activity for in babies. So it may mean that you have smarter babies. It may mean that you have smarter babies if you breastfeed your baby. Okay, so now this is not to shade or diss anybody. This is just general facts and general figures. So <laughs> what, um, what are the nitty gritties? Now let's go into the nitty gritties of breastfeeding. What is, what is breast milk? How does it come in? ETC, ETC. The first breast milk that a woman will have will typically come in after three or five days 
that she delivers, like post delivery, three or five days after you've delivered your baby is when you would, your milk will start to, you know, flow. And there are things that you can do to also assist that flowing. I mean, I wish I knew this facts because I was put under a lot of pressure for nothing. And I will share my personal story much later in this um, discourse. So three to five days after you deliver, your milk comes in fully. And that first milk is very thick, is very yellowish, and it contains a lot of antibodies, so much. It also contains something I don't know how, I don't know the name now, but I'll put it below, immunoglobula A, sec sec secretory immunoglobula A. And it's a very powerful substance that goes into your baby's intestine and coats it. It's a protective substance that coats it, you know, as baby enters into the world and prepares it for, you know, food, more milk and other foods, okay? So... Wu, that is World Health Organization, advises that you breastfeed your baby exclusively for at least six months. You know, the first six months of a baby's life, just exclusively breastfeed your baby. Then you can now start to, that means no water, no pap, because some people add all these things. No water, no pap, no anything else. Just breast milk. The first six months of a baby, I did that, of a baby's life. I almost... Your whole year gone stuff. <laughs> God help us. Yeah. So, but after that, you can now introduce family-friendly foods to your baby. That's family food. What baby can eat, pureed. And those ones too have to be prepared to, you know, there are some things you can't give some a baby. Something that is too acidic now, you can't give a baby at six months. So even that has to be done with caution. Okay? Back to, I digressed a bit, back to the colostrum. Colostrum usually lasts a few days. It doesn't take long and it comes in small quantity. Like I remember when I pumped my colostrum, I'll look for a picture and insert here. I pumped it and, you know, I showed my doctor and she's like, in fact, you did well. Okay. We'll talk about the things that you need to help breastfeeding as well, just in these basics. Okay. So, um, after a few weeks or after the first few weeks, you, you will notice that your, your milk becomes more, you know, creamier, whiter, and more plenteous. That is because antibodies are reducing and giving way to lactose, all those fatty nutri nutrients that your baby needs to, to add muscle to, to bam bam, okay? <laughs> so that happens and that continues till everything balances out. Okay. Now, one of the things that I would advise that you get to some of the things that I would advise that you get to aid your breastfeeding journey is a breast pump. I don't think it can be overemphasized, especially if you are a working mom that is nine to five, like you go to an office, please get yourself a breast pump. Um, I'm not doing an advert for them, but the brand that I used and I enjoyed using was Medela. And I know that a lot of people say that Medela is good. Medela breast pump. You can get the manual if you don't have um, constant electricity in your area, or you can get the automatic. And for someone that is going to work, our advice you get the two mounted pumps, the one that has two mounts, so that you can you can be doing you can do a lot you can produce a lot of milk that you can store. But if you want to save cost or save money or if you're going to be more at home than you're working then you can get the one mounted one and either one you use whether the one that is electronic or the one that is manual breast pump is important in your journey i also advise that you get nipple cream uh, it cannot be overemphasized because at a point especially when they are having those um cluster feeding seasons Cluster feed. We'll talk about these things later. When they are eating, 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 there's something that is happening in their body that makes them want to eat, eat, eat. Your nipple will be sore, <laughs> and you need to put some things on it. I also got the lanolin, the medelanolin um, cream. I may insert a picture. The medelanolin cream, and you can put that on your nipple as well. Just know that with breastfeeding comes breast changes. Some people's nipples become darker. Mine became darker at the first phase. Now it's fairer again. And then your nipple will grow larger. 
to become like a saucer. It's all helping your body to adapt to what you're about to do. And, you know, it was weird, but I would advise that before you even give birth, start using your breast pump on your breast, kind of pull out the nipple. Some nurses say you should be pulling out your nipple when you are bathing. You know, I did that for a while, but it was it was still weird, it was strange, but all those things help. Is is still stimulating all that because your baby will come and will drag it out for you very well. You know the funny thing, I breastfed my child from only one breast, if only I had known. So the second breast still produces milk, yeah? But <laughs> when my baby was small, it wasn't as fast. You know, even now, it wasn't as fast as one particular breast. So I just stuck to that breast. And a lot of times I have a lopsided breast, but that's like the only adverse effect. One breast best fed my baby and it was good. But I want to advise you to do that. Am I digressing? Anyways, it's still part of the breastfeeding basics. The next thing I would advise you to get is nursing bras. They are... Some of them are super expensive. Some of them are inexpensive. It doesn't matter which one you get. Just make sure you get good nursing bras. The ones that you can clip and release, I would, I would say those ones are better. Also get nursing dresses. I wouldn't advise the dresses that have zips by the side because if your breast is very big, then it's not easy to pull out your breast. I would just advise those ones that you can just uncover your breast and bring it out. Those those kinds of nursing dresses or zippers or tops. You can just easily remove a top. <laughs> so those are nursing dresses that you can get. Zippers, button downs um, and tops, a lot of free tops that you can easy, easily wear. Because when you give birth, people don't understand that giving birth is work. Mm? You have to be feeding baby almost every one hour, two hours. They will come and visit you. So you want to still look appealing to an extent to people. I know that shouldn't be, but it is what it is. You want to still look approachable because they may say, oh, come out from the room to see people and things like that. So just get those things. Those are like the basics. Another thing that helped me, if you, you may I advise you to go and get Buffy pillow. <laughs> they are not telling me to do this advert for them, but get yourself a nursing pillow, and I use the Boppy brand. I still use it till now. It is so, so useful and beneficial. You know, the funny part is that I advised another friend to get a Boppy pillow, and she never really found it useful. She just, it just never worked for her. So, but it worked for me, and I'm advising you to, and I think it may work for you, may not. But yeah, just if you can, get yourself a Boppy pillow. It's, it helps with breastfeeding. It just makes things more cushiony, okay? If you can get a nursing chair in your your baby's room, get. Also stock up on lots of postnatal vitamins. <sighs> you know, someone said it before, and I'm going to, and I think I've said it before. When your body lacks some nutrients, it can even contribute to you feeling postpartum depression, you're feeling emotionally and mentally drained. But when your body is well fed, when your body is well nurtured, it, 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 it drops the likelihood of having some of those symptoms by, by a lot, not just a bit. So I would advise you get yourself postnatal um, drugs. I was using the pregnant care breastfeeding, um, postnatal breastfeeding pack, and I used it for six months. I don't use any postnatal drug now. I just use normal vitamins. But I would advise you get it. It's very beneficial. It will help. It will help you to adjust because the first few weeks, the first few months of baby are very, very demanding. And if you don't have enough nutrients, you can even faint. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Do you know that breastfeeding takes up to 300 to 500 calories a day from a woman? So you need to feed well and you need to be well nurtured inside nutrients. So that's another thing I would say you should do. Stock up on food. And I don't think you should be the one cooking. There's a, there's a word that goes about that says when baby is sleeping, you should sleep. But it doesn't work like that because a lot of time baby sleeps off on your breasts. 
and you're actually working, you're breastfeeding when baby is breastfeeding. So when baby is eating, you can't necessarily eat except you're snacking, okay? And when baby is sleeping, you also have some things you want to do. You want to have your bath because when baby is having their bath, you can't have your bath. You're the one that is helping with bathing baby. So some of those and some of those advices don't work for a lot of women. So please stop saying them to women. Don't say when baby is sleeping. I, we understand what you're saying, but I think it's better to say rest as much as you can. I told you that this, this, this particular topic is, is very, um, there's a lot of digression, but yeah. So back to what we're saying. You're going to be needing to eat well. That's just what I'm saying when you're a breastfeeding baby because you're going to be losing a lot of calories. So please, as much as you can, feed well. God will provide for you, for your family, but you need to feed well. And please, don't be quick to snap back. Don't mind people. You snap back, you're fat, kiniko, kiniko. When you're a breastfeeding baby, you need to be fat. You, you need to be fat. Your life literally depends on it. So do not mind people. And don't think of fasting when you're breastfeeding baby. I know the days that I, I think I tried to do a three-day fast and then my, my milk just ceased. And I was like, oh God, please forgive me. Where's my milk? And that was the end. I fast now. I fast now, you know, because my baby is over a year. And I fast. even when I fast, it's sometimes still maybe noon. Mm -hmm. But that first week, those first phase, God doesn't need your fast. Sorry, I don't, I don't want to be mean, but no, don't fast. Okay? Eat well. And do not care about snapping back. Eat well. Okay? You're losing 300 to 500 calories a day. Do you know what that is? Now, moving, moving, moving forward. <sighs> I've talked about the benefits of breastfeeding to you and to baby. Um, immune benefits, health benefits, connection with baby and mama. When you're breastfeeding your baby, that connection is not something that you can get. You can't get it with formula or bottle feeding. You can't get it. So there are deep connections that is made when you're breastfeeding your baby. Some people even use that as an opportunity to make pronunciations and blessings upon their baby's lives. I did it in the first few weeks of baby's life. So those are moments you're, you're looking at your baby's face. You're noticing, it's an opportunity to even notice things. You may notice rashes, mosquito bites when you're breastfeeding because the gaze is intense. It's intense in that period. Okay? So I think I've talked about everything breastfeeding basics for now. If you, yeah, get nursing pads. If you're going to be going out, especially those first few weeks, um, you may have some interesting letdowns. If your baby is crying, just start licking. Is, is, that, is that serious? Is that weird? The first few weeks. So please get nursing pads, disposable ones that you can throw away. They have them. I also bought Medela. Just buy plenty and keep in your house. Now, some extra things that I think you would need that I bought. I bought one Hydro Pearl Therapy by Lanosh. La um, and it's a hot compress for when you have engorgements. I hope you don't, but most people do you may have engorgements um, during the first few weeks because your milk is coming at such a fast pace, sometimes faster than your baby can drink or faster than you have the energy to pump out. And then it gets stuck and then you have a plug duct. And God forbid it develops into mastitis. mastitis. That one comes with fever and they may have to drain the particular duct. Yeah, it's that serious. But to help, I would advise to help with engorgement, get um, cold therapy packs. They have them, cold breast compress packs, and get warm breast compress packs. I got one that could do both. I think I'll insert a picture. You can put it in the microwave and put it on your breast, especially when you're um, pumping out. You can put it on your breast and it will help with the um, engorgement. Another secret, which I will still share later, that helps with engorgement. I'm whispering now. Don't let anybody hear. If you have a vibrator in your house, which I have, you can put it on the place that has the engorgement and it will help. Okay? That's just our little secret. Don't share it with anybody. I've not heard it anywhere, but it worked for me. Okay. <laughs> Moving forward. So, yeah. 
So you, I will talk about the problems of breastfeeding. We'll go more into the nitty gritty later. I just want to talk about my personal story. So I didn't have a ple pleasant experience starting off breastfeeding. And I know that a lot of women don't. It was awfully painful. And I felt um, I was a bit abused. That's the word that I know it's extreme, but that's the word that came to mind. So on the night that I delivered my baby, you know, my baby was always crying and then the nurse would come and they would give my baby, with syringe, they would give my baby this glucose water. And I was told not to buy formula that I would, I would produce milk. Now, it is fact that milk, a lot of people's milk does, especially for first time mom, doesn't come in until after two or three or four or five days post delivery. So I felt like a failure. I was seeing my baby starve and then I was expecting that, why is this breast not producing milk? Why am I not producing milk for my baby? Like, I felt like I was failing the child. So I was, I was feeling bad. And, and then you have these people that are coming in and saying, are you sucking? Are you doing this? At a point, they brought in one very painful suction stuff like that with jagged edges. And they put it on my breast and they were pulling the nipple, pulling the nipple out, pulling the nipple out. God, it was so painful. It was so painful. And I look back now and I find that absolutely unnecessary. I could have just been using my beautiful, smooth breast pump and then putting baby to breast. And then eventually the milk would have come. So um, I stayed in the hospital for um, this. The first night I stayed, they were using glucose and at a point they were pricking a little baby you know they would prick the the heels of the baby just to make sure that the sugar level wasn't too low in the baby's body i felt bad anytime they prick my baby a new baby you know be, i just felt like i was feeling my baby i couldn't produce milk that's why they are doing this to this baby so the next morning came and my husband you know my husband was in the room with me and my baby just started crying. And my baby just started crying. And I was just fed up. And I said, you know what? Please go help me get formula. And at that time, I didn't even know that there were some formulas that were good for baby. I just said, I've heard this and this are good. Just help me get this and this. Just go, please. You know, because I couldn't leave the hospital. I was with baby. So, and that morning, they were supposed to have like a surgery in the hospital that I was a small clinic I was in so baby was crying really loud I was the only one in the room baby I'm not even eating breakfast and then before you knew it you know I think the main doctor was coming up so everybody was scampering about just came to my room why is baby crying why is baby give baby food give baby food this is that the, the doctor who came in I was shouting at me you know you're not doing well enough we're not going to discharge you you're not feeding baby I swear maybe this is exaggerated because of postpartum or anything or my emotions were but I didn't know it but I was just getting angry I was just boiling and I was beginning to boil to a tip over so at that point one of my church mommies came and then I think she saw how they were shouting and everything and she was like ah, please you push it like calm down and everything the doctor was not like ah, if we don't talk like this they will not know the importance of breastfeeding like at at that point, I love my doctor, but I was like, I already determined that I was going to breastfeed this child before now, as in it's, I know the benefits, I'm doing it. Okay? So, they had to go for the surgery, so they went out, they said if they come back, that my breast milk should have been flowing, or things like that, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, um, and they assigned a nurse to me, very beautiful nurse, but I shouted at her that day. I had already gotten to a tipping point. So the mommy was in, I was holding my baby, um, the nurse had brought the glucose water and I was like, no, I'm not giving baby glucose water that the, the father has gone to get formula. And they were like, no, maybe we'll not drink formula. Ah, maybe we'll drink breast milk. I said, this, I cannot kill myself that if this baby is not going to eat that formula, then baby is not going to eat. And I, as in, and, and then I began to, before you know, I began to shout at her, that, how can you just come in here and just be screaming at me? I'm still healing. I'm this and this. And I just vented at her. And then that, my church mommy was telling me to calm down, to calm down. In the middle of venting, my husband walks in. I'm like, 
he wasted so much time because I was just feeling so much pressure. And then, and then something funny happened. So then they took the baby away from me or something like that. And then I'm like, I'm just coming, just give me a moment. And then I went into the bathroom. Then I cried. I don't cry in public. I don't like showing my emotions like that in public. But then in my secret place, I just went and cried. And But I could hear some of the conversations. So between my church mommy and then the nurse and my husband, you know, they were like, are you sure she's okay? Are you sure she's not going through postpartum depression? And I wanted to just come out and say, all of you, are you normal? Like, you can't just come and shout at somebody and then you expect that... There were lots of things that were going on. I was feeling like a failure, and then you just came and bombarded me. So next thing I did, which was very funny, was that I took out my phone in the toilet, and then I just randomly messaged somebody on that I seen on YouTube, and I just messaged her at Easy Space, and I was like, "Good morning. How are you doing today?" I'm sure she. Was, I, I'm not surprised that she had my time that day because she messaged me, "Hi, how are you?" I'd, I'd seen her in like that clinic before. So I just messaged her that something frustrating just happened this morning. Um, they were shouting at me to breastfeed my baby, some, 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 something. And I just poured out my heart to her. And she was listening by our chats. And she's like, you know what, don't mind them. Just give your baby formula. That's how they are. That's how they always do. Don't mind them. It's okay. I know you're failure, something like that. And I felt so good. I felt better. And I'm like, even a stranger over the internet understands me better than, you know, my people. And it can be like that sometimes. If those around you are not understanding you, then let God direct you and just look for someone to vent to because you need to. You need to. And then when I came back outside, everybody was walking around eggshells. And then I now called my husband to his side that, do you know what actually happened is that, it's not as if I cannot go through postpartum depression. I'm not saying I'm not, but I don't think that's what's happening. What happened was I got to a tipping point Everybody was shouting at me because they came in and said, why is this thing here like this? How are you putting baby's uh, flax near your own flax? Da, 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 da. Did, 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 did. Don't you know that you can infect baby's food? I'm like, what's going on here? So that was my, that is my own personal journey into breastfeeding. So later on, in, later on that day, later on in the evening, you know, I was still trying to suck. I didn't bring my best pump, so I was still using... There was a suction, very painful thing that they gave me. And then I think one or two liquids just dropped. That was the colostrum that was dropping. And I was so happy. And then I told the head, head nurse then that was with me that it had started dropping. So she informed the doctor. Now, the next day, that was now the... That was like the third day that I come to the hospital, right? The next day, the doctor came in the morning... And I was supposed to be discharged on that day. And she's like, ah, your milk is coming in too small, though, that we can't discharge this baby. Um, we can't let this baby go home and not be well-fed. Me that wanted to leave the hospital. Bills were racking up. Then the, co the hospital wasn't even that comfortable. I just wanted to go home. That made me feel like crying again. When the doctor went, I was like, God, why me? Cried again. That God, please, let this breast milk. So unnecessary trauma. Use unnecessary trauma unnecessary anyways i don't know if this story is making sense i'm just saying it the way it happened i probably put a long post a text post and refer you guys to it of what actually happened in a more calmer tone so i told my husband that ah, they said they will not discharge me so i kept sucking the thing out when maybe sleeping they said i me to be resting i was trying to bring out breast milk bring out breast milk so something small eventually came out and then the evening they said okay your baby looks like it looks like you can breastfeed now don't worry you can go home so that evening my husband took me home so yeah that's the end of the story that's the end of my breastfeeding that's the end of the breastfeeding story and this long episode i hope you've learned something i hope you've taken away something breastfeeding is beautiful it's powerful it's beneficial to both you and to your baby and there may be a lot of pressure the first few days to breastfeed your baby but it is absolutely normal if your milk is not coming in just relax yes i forgot to add it's very important that you are calm with calmness with relaxing comes a better flow of your breast milk take your postnatal vitamins um 
just be in a good state eat well eat very well and don't think about snapping back or pleasing people or things like that and god will help you and your baby a well-nourished mommy equals a well-nourished baby i love you guys and i will see you in the next episode where we talk about bottle feedings